If you're in need of a cute and chaotic party game to enjoy on your own or with your friends, then Party Animals might be just what you're looking for. Here's everything you need to know. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Sunstone, and today I will be getting you all up to speed with Party Animals, an adorable physics-based party game that is releasing this week. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Developed by Recreate Games and published by Source Technology, Party Animals lets you fight your friends or work together as the really cute animals in a variety of online and offline game modes. Interact with each other and the world under a realistic physics engine for hours of laughs and fun. The team over at Recreate Games was kind enough to grant me early access to the closed beta testing for party animals, so I have lots of information and first-hand experience playing the game to share with you. First up, let's go through all the currently available animals who you can pick from to play as. We have Nemo, Coco, Macchiato, Otta, Underbite, Harry, Carrot, Uni, Lloyd, Barbie, Max, Tiagra, Bacon, Valiente, Morse, Sparky, Tuscar, Hachi, Garfat, Lou, Moon Moon, Fluffy, Curtis, Hammer, Levi, Yurusa, Bruce, and Bob. They also recently announced Cabbage Dog on their Twitter, so there's that too. All base animals can be obtained for free in the game, so you can choose to play as your favorite. You can also customize the animals even further with different skins and outfits. So for example, you can change the color of carrot to gold, pink, black and white, and more. Some of the skins are highly focused on just changing the color, while others transform the animal a bit more with a unique pattern, like Uni's zebra variant or Valiente's cow variant. There's also quite a wide variety of different costumes available for all of the characters, so you can personalize your party animal to your taste. Some of them are cute, others hilarious, there's definitely something for everyone. There are three different ways to unlock all of these unique skins and outfits. The first is through in-game achievements and leveling up. There are about 100 achievements in the game overall, some of which require you to show off some skill or complete certain tasks, while others reward you for being cheeky and just having fun. The second way to unlock cosmetics is through the item shop. This stock rotates on a weekly basis and can be purchased with two types of earnable currency. Nemo Bucks and Cookies. It seems like you can earn almost an unlimited amount of cookies, but Nemo Bucks aren't quite as common, so you can purchase extra Nemo Bucks if you want to, but you can also just earn them in-game, so you don't need to spend any real-world money. The third way to acquire new cosmetics is through surprise eggs. So you can obtain surprise egg tokens by leveling up, and then exchange these at the gotcha machine for random outfits. So again, you don't need to make any purchases, but there is also an option here to purchase extra tokens with real money if you want additional pulls sooner on the gotcha. So to reiterate, there are three ways to unlock cosmetics, all of which can be done without spending any real money, but there are also options to purchase extra currency if you want to unlock cosmetics quicker, for example. It's important to note that the skins and outfits don't provide any stat bonuses, so they don't make you stronger, just cuter. So now that we've covered all the aesthetic components of the adorable party animals, let's talk gameplay. There is a really fun and comprehensive tutorial that you can play through as many times as you would like to get used to the controls. I found this necessary for myself because it takes a bit of getting used to the physics-based mechanics. For example, if you don't line yourself up correctly with the handle of a weapon, you won't be able to properly pick it up and use it. This really just adds to the chaos in the best way. Watching the cute little animals try their best to do what you're asking them to do is always guaranteed to make you laugh. The game is available to play with keyboard and mouse or with controller, which I personally find to be more comfortable and I think many of you would agree. Once you're through the tutorial, you can start playing. There are three main types of game modes, Last Stand, Team Score, and Arcade. Last Stand games play like a battle royale where players fight to be the last one standing, and this is actually done in pairs of two to balance teamwork and fight. 
You can also create custom lobbies with eight solos, four duos, or two squads. In team score games, your team needs to perform specific tasks to earn points, and the team that reaches the score limit first or has more points by the end of the game clock wins. Any fun game that didn't fit under Last Stand or Team Score is categorized as Arcade, and these games will show up in custom lobbies. So across all game modes, there are about 20 unique stages altogether. They haven't all been officially introduced, but I can at least talk about the stages that I've personally played so far, starting with the last stand stages that I've tried. So in all of these, you are battling to be the last one standing. First up is Ishiban, where you literally have to throw each other off the stage and last until the end. If you get thrown off, sometimes you do have a chance to climb back up, but in this map you have to be careful of the green mist, which will rise over the course of the match. If you breathe in too much of the mist, you will pass out and be eliminated. Next is the wind tunnel. Again, sometimes in this one, if you get thrown off, you can climb back up, but you could also fall beneath the stage, and from that, there's no returning. Periodically, these giant fans will go off, pulling you towards them. To avoid getting blown off the stage, you need to interact with the little levers to raise some barriers that you can then hide behind, but over time, the levers will eventually break, and then, well, you're kinda hooped. Then we have Black Hole Lab, and in this stage you are fighting beside a black hole generator. Super safe, right? When the black hole activates, players will need to grab onto different heavy objects to avoid being absorbed by the black hole. Finally, for last dance stages, we have Typhoon. In this stage, you are fighting on the top of a submarine in the ocean. There are rockets to watch out for, and of course the surrounding waters. As the match goes on, the submarine will descend into the water, so you have to climb up and stay above the water as long as you can to be the last critter standing. The other stages I've played all fall into the team score category, starting with Buzzball. In Buzzball, you have to score points on the opposing team with the Buzzball, but the catch is that if you hold on to the ball at the same time as anyone else, you're gonna get shocked. Then we have Lollipop Factory, which is probably one of my favorite stages that I've played so far. In this one, you have to carry gummies to your team's side of the map before pulling a lever to trade them in for points. The gummy bears are worth a lot more than the little gumdrops, so you definitely wanna stop the opposing team from getting those or it's gonna be game over pretty quick. I also really love Beast Hockey. This is another one of my favorites. In this stage, players need to get the giant ice hockey puck into the opponent's net to earn points, but you have to be careful because you might get knocked out by the puck or by your teammates. It happens a lot. There are shields you can use to help you protect the net, but otherwise you've got to punch and kick that puck to score points. Finally, from the playtest, we have Trebuchet. In this map, your team uses the catapult to throw bombs to the opponent's base and let them explode to earn points. You can also throw your teammates over to mess with your opponents, or you can stay back home and throw any incoming bombs into the river before they explode. We've also seen so many glimpses of other stages that I haven't yet had a chance to play, so I can't wait to try them all later this week. And within these different game modes and maps, there's also a really fun variety of weapons and tools to use, so every match feels just a little different. From lollipops and frying pans to shovels and boomerangs, just to name a few, these items will be dropped periodically throughout the match to help you get an upper hand. Also, if you're eliminated from one of the last stand matches, you can actually still participate while you spectate. You can throw fish, banana peels, and bombs to mess with other players and help your teammate if they're still standing. I also want to cover the different options for playing these maps, because we're given a lot of ways to customize matches, which is amazing. So the most straightforward way to play party animals is through a quick match. Here, a player group of one to four people can form a team and quickly join a game against others. Once a match is found, players in the session will be able to vote for a map to play. Your teammates will be on the same side as you, but if you wish to fight amongst friends, you can create a custom lobby instead. In a custom game, you can play around with lots of different options to tailor the experience to your taste. First, you will select between the three different game modes, then you can create teams, add spectators, and play around with lots of different settings like player HP, stamina, weapons, and more. You can keep your custom game open for anyone to join, or you can lock it with a passcode. For online play, you can simply add your friends with their in-game IDs, but if you're already friends on Steam or Xbox Live, they will automatically appear in your party animals friends list. 
There's voice chat, emotes, and in-game text chat, but all of this is completely optional. You can turn it all off if you'd prefer. Uh, there are a ton of privacy settings available, so you can block chat entirely, hide player names, lobby names, friend invitations, and more. So if you still want to play online but would like additional privacy, there's tons of settings available to help you out. But if you just want to play offline altogether, you can do that as well. You can enjoy local multiplayer with up to four players on the same device, and if you do want to take that battle online from local play, you can do so via custom games. You can even set up AI opponents if you just want to practice or have some fun offline. Party Animals is releasing on September 20th for PC and Xbox, as well as Xbox Game Pass, but the team also has plans to start working on supporting other platforms after the initial release. Well, there you have it friends. That was everything I think you should know about Party Animals based on my experience so far with the game. I personally see this game as a really fun way to connect with your friends and honestly just have a lot of laughs. Let me know down in the comments if you plan to play Party Animals, and even if not, please let me know which of the adorable animals is your favorite. Anything and everything, you know I always love hearing from you. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching, I love you all, and until next time, take care. And a very special thanks to Meredith, Formotus, Tansy, Cisco, Cheese, Divine Raven, Blossom, Paul, Jack, Danny, Starry Days, Dream, Becca, Kayla, Isenal, Wolf, Bumble, Salem, Zaries, Anime Lover, Ember, Lawrence, and Fabiola, my beautiful Sunstone members. I love you all very much and thank you so so much for the extra support on the channel, which really helps to make all that I do possible. It means the world to me.